We're going to be talking about standing waves and how to use them, what the different equations look like for the different patterns that we need to know. I put this bear right here because look, he's standing and he's waving. <laughs> so what is it that we mean by standing waves? And I thought maybe it might help to just show you a, a little a demonstration here. This is uh, the always great PHET. So this is from University of Colorado. They're great. And just to show you, for example, if you have a string, so this is closed at both ends. And what we're going to do is we're just going to introduce a pulse into it. So we're just going to get a pulse and notice as it hits the ends, it just reflects and it inverts and that's it. it just goes back and forth. That's not that exciting. But what if I add a second one? I'll just add a second pulse. Concentrate very carefully. Do you notice this bottom one here actually goes along the top? It's just that while they meet, it does look kind of strange. But can you see where I'm moving my mouse right here? It's actually just following it. So it does happen. It's just that um, it's very interesting where they meet. This is because of superposition. Of course, I could try to make a standing wave, but of course it's going to be very difficult. Look, I'm just going to keep adding more pulses. I'm going to make it look really messy, and I've just totally messed it up now. Do you notice? doesn't look very nice. So standing waves are going to be formed, first of all, when uh, a couple of things happen. First of all, you can form them uh, as long as you keep your frequency and the amplitude, you don't change them while you're doing this. And two waves would meet in superposition in opposite directions. So keep in mind, it's two different waves. So watch my hands here. Two different waves that are meeting and superposing like this here, going back and forth. And the result of the superposition is that it looks like the wave goes sort of up and down like this. It doesn't. It's actually two different waves like this. So let me see if I can get that one to go uh, to look a little bit nicer here. So let me just do this one again. So this time I'm going to do oscillate. And I played around with different settings to get something that looked about right. I actually did it by being cheap. I actually did a pulse and I measured the amount of time it took to get there with a little timer that they had. And then I used that to calculate the frequency. And it actually it worked okay. So what I'm going to do this time is it's going to be an oscillator this time. I mean, it's just going to basically always be driving this thing. It's going to be basically oscillating this. We're going to see what happens. Notice it's still, it's still going to do like this. It's still going to create a wave. Except the thing is, it's just going to be like, it's always going to be like a wave that's kind of always moving. It's going to be like this or here, like I'm doing it much, much nicer. Oh, it's kind of happening now. So it's going to do much, much nicer than that. So let me see. So if I just go oscillate. So it's going to make a pulse. And you notice what happens is as they go along, just the way that they meet, they end up kind of making like this one pattern. Do you notice right here what's happening? It's going down, then up, then down. And of course, do you notice then it's going like this, then like this, then like this, then like this. Okay, so it's never like, uh, well, it depends which different versions. We're going to talk about harmonics later. So those sometimes can go up and down like this. These are really cool because there's lots of applications to standing waves, including music, pretty much any musical instrument. But also standing waves can be not just in 1D, uh, but actually in 3D. You can have these like, you know, in a symbol of a drum. You can do these actually in water. You can create standing waves or on metal pieces. There's a video that I loved when it came out. This is awesome. Like, look at this. It's called a Rubens tube, actually, that they'd used. That's where they create standing waves in a tube. Uh, so they attach a speaker to one end of this, you know, open tube, but they also pump in gas where they actually light it as well. So if we look at this one here, I'll just mute it right here. But if you look at this, highly recommend. Do you notice as you're playing the piano, it makes these cool standing wave patterns with flames. That's kind of cool. So of course, it's very dramatic what they've done in this video. But I think it's really neat to see that you can have some really cool effects. This is actually just creating standing waves here. So as he's playing the piano, he's got a speaker attached to this. And as it's creating these standing waves in this right here, it's making these places where the flames are higher and lower and so on. So this actually works. Now, what's happening here when we consider a wave like this? Uh, remember, this whole thing is actually not still. Do you notice? Uh, do you remember from this right here? I just want you to imagine these diagrams we're looking at are not static. They are moving. Okay, so all these things, they're always moving. Now, it's hard to draw something that moves. So I'm going to draw it like this, like this, like this, like this. This is like a snapshot. But keep in mind, it also can be like this. Do you see what I mean? Like it sort of also goes like this. So I want you to imagine in your head these things are actually moving like this. So if you look at this, there are, exist some places where nothing moves. Those are called nodes. Those are places where the, you know, the end result is it doesn't vibrate. Now we've also got anti-nodes. Those are places where it's maximum amplitude. So those would be, for example, like here, for example, this would be an anti-node. So would this right here, because those are places where it goes up the most and down the most and so on. But when we're dealing with these, don't forget your good old pal V equals F lambda. Okay, everything else we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at different patterns, but it's going to be important to remember this equation. Because this equation gets you, you know, if you know two of these quantities, you can get the third. So you always apply V equals F lambda when needed.
So let's go into some detail now. So let's say we have uh, like maybe a string, for example, that's fixed at both ends. It could be like a guitar, piano, anything that's a stringed instrument. And we're going to look at these different harmonics here and look at these. So this is going to be the length of this string, and we're going to have the same length all three times. I'm just going to show you the very simplest pattern you can make. So from here, we're going to have a node here. We're going to have a node here because they're attached. And this is basically a game you need to learn how to play. I don't recommend you necessarily learn like memorize these, but it's a good idea to learn sort of how to play this game. So this is the simplest sort of thing you can set up is like this. Remember, it's going to be like the whole thing goes up, then down, then up, then down. That's why I draw the dotted line. So remember, it's going like this. Now, if we look at the length, let's look at the length of this thing right here compared to an entire actual uh, period. So in other words, one whole period of something right here goes like this, doesn't it? So like a, a period of a sine curve, for example, is like this. Well, half of it is this, and another half of it is this. Do you notice that? Like this, this piece plus this piece equals both of them. So let's look at what fraction then of a wavelength we have going on here. Look at this. So this one here, if we have this diagram right here, what do we have going on? We've got that the length is equal to, let's look, what fraction of a whole wavelength? Well, if a whole wavelength is all the way up and all the way down, then what we have here is just half. So we're going to call it lambda over 2. This is going to be an important piece. Now let's look at the next one. So the next one is going to be still a node here, still a node here, also this one. And the game you have to learn how to play is the next one just has one node in the middle. The next one's going to have two nodes in the middle equally spaced. So basically, you just have to make this work. So I'm going to go kind of, I guess, up. I'm not really that good at drawing these. Maybe you can draw them better than me. But I'm trying to draw something like this. There we go. Oh, this doesn't look too bad. This one here, let's say, goes up, then down, then up, then down. Ah, that wasn't as good, but oh well. I think you get the idea, though. It goes like this. So remember, these things are going to go up and down like this. Let's look at which fraction of a wavelength we have now. So this one right here, do you notice when we had a half a wavelength, we just count in half wavelength. So from here we have one half a wavelength plus another half. So we technically have two lambda over two. We have two of them. Of course, those reduce to just L equals lambda. In other words, our length equals the wavelength here, like the length of this string here or a length of this box or whatever this is. How about this one? We have one half, two halves, three halves. Does that make sense? And I'm going to say... L equals 3 times lambda over 2. And what I like to do is then when I look at these numbers right here, these harmonics, that's what we're going to call them. Some people call them fundamental than harmonics, but in our course we just need to learn about harmonics. And do you notice this one goes like 1 lambda over 2? The next one is technically 2 lambda over 2. Then the next one is 3 lambda over 2. So we're going to call these harmonics 1, 2, and 3 because of these numbers. So we're going to call this right here the first harmonic. This will be the second harmonic, and this will be the third harmonic. But don't forget throughout all of this, don't forget V equals F lambda. In case you need it, always use that as well. So that's for guitars and piano strings and stuff. That's how their waves are created. Let's look at something with closed at one end, open at the other. So for example, something you blow into, so it's fixed where you're blowing into it, and it's open at the other end, like a clarinet, trumpet, tuba, whatever. So again, we're going to draw it like this, and the rule is here, we're going to have a node here at the fixed end here all the time. And the rule is, at the open end here, it can't be at a node, it has to be an anti-node. So it's going to be a place with maximum displacement. So in this case right here, all I'm going to do, the simplest one I can do is like this, and I guess like this. In other words, it's sort of, it's going kind of up, then down, then up, then down. It's kind of flappy. It's kind of flapping up and down like this. The next one... I think you can probably guess. You put a node in the middle. The next one after that, maybe two nodes in the middle. So this one will go, I guess, pass it through here, then here, then like this. And I guess then the dotted line does the opposite, so something like that. This one goes kind of up, then down, then up again. This one goes down, then up, then down again, just to show the, you know, the opposite of what it does. So if we look at this then, let's try to look at what fraction of a wavelength we have going on now. Here we've got, do you notice we've got just one of these pieces here, just from middle to the top? But notice then we can also go top to the middle, middle to the bottom, and bottom back. And that's one whole wavelength. So you notice then this piece from here to here is actually a quarter of a wavelength. So we're going to say L equals lambda over 4. And now we're going to count by quarters. So now look at this one here. This one is one quarter two quarters, 
three quarters to get here. That means we're gonna say L equals three times lambda over four. Okay, this one right here, the bottom one is gonna be, let's see, one, two, three, four, and five quarters. So it's gonna be L equals five lambda over four. I recommend, don't memorize these necessarily, just learn how to play the game here, you'll be fine. And let's look at the harmonics then. This will be the first harmonic because it's, you know, one times lambda over four. But look carefully. This one gets a three lambda over four. This is a five lambda over four. So we're gonna count this one here as a third harmonic. That's the weird one, okay? And this one here is the fifth harmonic. That's a little bit weird. So that's why I said pro tip, just keep in mind for closed open like we just drew here, the harmonics go one, three, and five, not one, two, three, which is kind of weird. But there we go. Let's look at the last one, open at both ends. This could be like a flute. So you know something you blow over the top of? It's got two open ends, like a, I think a piccolo as well. I'm not sure, but I know flute for sure. Because my niece, uh, she plays the flute really well and she knows how to do this. She just blows across the top and this actually works like this. So if we look at this right here, um, well, this one is weird because it's gotta be anti-node here, anti-node here. The first one's gonna have a node in the middle. Next one's gonna have two nodes in the middle, and next one's gonna have three nodes in the middle. Good luck drawing this, let's see. I'll try like this, I'll go like this, kind of down like this, and like this. And I'll go like this, and like this. Yeah, it's not too bad, and then up, then down, and finally, down, up, down, and then up, down, up. Let's look at what fraction of wavelength, wavelengths do we have. We have from the top all the way to the middle and all the way down. So if I look at this, I'm looking at one of these. But to do a whole wavelength, I need another one. Do you notice? Because this would be like one whole wavelength. From here to here is actually one whole period, a whole cycle, a whole wavelength. So that looks weird. It's because it continues, of course, right? It continues again like this right here. So one whole wavelength is from here to here. So if we do this right here, then let's look at which fraction of uh, L here we have. So L is what fraction of a wavelength? Well, we've got a half of a wavelength here, so it's gonna be lambda over two. This one, next one, is gonna be, let's see, we've got, so from the top to the middle is lambda over two. So I've got one of those, then I've got two of those. So I've got L equals, well, two lambda over two, which just reduces to L equals lambda. Doesn't it look like the first one? And then we have L equals, let's count here. So you've got one lambda over two, two lambda over two, three lambda over two. So three lambda over two. Do you notice in what number are we always multiplying? We're always multiplying by lambda over two and it goes one, then two, then three. So these harmonics are gonna go first, second, and third. But don't forget, throughout all of these, in case you ever need them, I just don't want you to forget, we've also got V equals F lambda hanging out here. And we've also got that for the other one too. I just wanna put those in for each of these, just so you can see them hanging out here. We always use these in case we need. So we have an organ pipe, and it's open at one end, closed at the other. Right away, before anything else, I'm just gonna try to draw that. So here is my organ pipe open at one end, closed at the other. I know for sure that I need a node here. Now, uh, ooh, it has a first harmonic. Remember what that means? That means it's the simplest one. It's just this one here. This is your first harmonic. That means, hey, before I do anything else, I can already figure out some stuff here. Again, I try to not memorize it. I try to just figure it out as I go along. What fraction of a wavelength do I have going on here? I have L equals, remember, a whole wavelength would be up, then down, then up. And actually, I've only got from here to here. Do you notice that's actually all I'm looking at here, from the middle to the top? So because of that, I can say it's one-fourth of a wavelength. So I've got lambda over four. That's gonna be the key thing. So let's see what we're looking at now. So the question says, okay, if the speed of sound and air uh, in the pipe is 330 meters per second, what's the length of the organ pipe? Ah, we want L. Now we have an equation already for L, don't we? We know that L equals lambda over four. Well, that's pretty nice. We just need to find the lambda, I guess. You see that, like, uh, because we don't know it, we'll probably need to know lambda. Okay, so how do we find lambda? I'll say maybe need lambda. Remember I said there's a good old pal equation, V equals F lambda, that's your friend. So let's do that one. So we're gonna use V equals F lambda to get lambda. So let's see, so how does lambda work? Lambda is, well, V over F. So it's a speed of air, in this case because it's sound, over F. 
Do I know um, what? Actually, maybe I'll just do this one. Hold on. I'm just going to do this one a different color, I think. So that means I have lambda equals v over f. All right, if I put in the numbers, do I know the speed of sound? Yes, I do. It's 330 meters per second, so everything is good. The units are good. Frequency is supposed to be 16 hertz. All right, so let's find actually lambda here. So what is that? I need to do 330 over 16. I end up with, oh, thanks, calculator. Uh, oh, it's 20.625. Now keep in mind that's in meters. That's actually a pretty large value, isn't it? <laughs> That's actually a big wavelength, but okay, so fair enough. Now I take that then and I put it into this equation. So that means now I have, okay, I have L. It's gonna be equal to this number, this 20.625. And what am I gonna do? Divide that by four. So if I do that on my calculator, I just say answer divided by four and I say go. And I get 5.15625. 5.15625. Okay, well, if I want to do this, and what does that really mean? Well, let's see, I'm allowed two significant figures, so that means I'll say L is approximately equal to 5. Point, and this one here, let's say it rounds up to 2, so it'll be 5.2 meters. That'll be the length of this organ pipe, which is fairly big, but it should make sense because this is a very low frequency sound. This is like, you know, if you've ever seen like a church organ or one of these big organs that you see sometimes at uh, different, you know, shows or different presentations, this is something that's actually huge, this thing. And of course, that's the one that makes the big, deep, low noises. That's why this frequency is actually very, very low. But there we go. We've seen an example of how to work with standing waves and how they can be formed in a... Uh, different strings or containers or different you know, situations, but it's always formed as a superposition of two different waves back and forth. And depending on the different, you know, versions of them, like there's this one or this one or this one and so on. You can look at, you know, fixed at both ends, open at one end, closed at the other, or open at both ends.